Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and we're gonna be playing some mono white weenies. Uh, so usually weenie strategies are like one and two drop creatures. Um, ideally one mana, two power creatures, and you just kind of smash face. Um, so the original deck list credit goes to Defor on uh, Twitter. Uh, speaking of him, he got to Mythic pretty early and got a 5-1 on SEG Satellite uh, over the weekend. Um, so we've been speaking a bit, we've made some modifications to the deck. Um, but basically what you're trying to do with this deck is curve out very early and then use a uh, glorious anthem to pump the power of all your creatures. Um, so we have in total 19 effective one drops in the deck. A giant killer, selfless savior, usher the fallen which could create more creatures, venerable knight which is just a one mana two one in this deck, and then stone coil which can be a one mana spell, can be a five mana spell, there's flexibility in doing so. Um, by playing so many one drops, you're able to use a, a Clarion Spirit. It's a two mana, two, two. Whenever you cast a second spell each turn, uh, you get to create a one, one flyer. Um, so in turn three, if you cast this plus another creature, another spell, you get the trigger off that. Um, we're a white based aggro strategy, so Aspirant and Hallow Blade uh, both are coming in here. Hallow Blade is really nice to put counters on. To, uh, it's hard to kill, and then you can throw on like a maul. Uh, in this version, we're also playing Bazard Ket to make our creatures larger, and then to thread in the emblem against some of the slower decks. Um, originally, Defor didn't have uh, the Snowland package. I think it's pretty free to add the Snowlands and two Faceless Havens just as a creature line. We're also playing four uh, Castle Ardenvales. Um, Sideboard-wise, I've revised my version of the list slightly more than... Or slightly different, sorry, not slightly more. Slightly different than what uh, DeFore was playing. Um, so I like to have another savior for a heavy removal, glass casket when we need to have um, things to kill in that respect. Hushbringers uh, to shut down like food decks. Actually, we haven't seen as much Hushbringers, so we're gonna play a second Redain here. Uh, Banishing Light is general catch-all removal. Another Maul versus like green-based strategies to go over the top. Uh, Redain uh, allows us to slow down the snow decks but also its backside um artifact uh is good against like mono red any sort of direct uh damage or direct targeting style f decks to slow them down in that regard even against like yorian decks most of their meaningful spells are four mana or more so they slow them down to or slow them down a turn at least um on the front side and then skyclave apparition just general catch-all removal so generally game one you want to be really aggressive, game two you bring in the interaction. Um, I'm a couple games away from Mythic so I just don't want to play on the queue with a deck I'm not as versed with. Um, I am 7-0 with this um, at like plat level. Um, the meta has shifted quite a bit so just want to see how it plays out with this. Um, the nice thing about playing so many one drops in the deck is it allows you to be pretty aggressive without having to mulligan. Um, generally, you can win a lot of games with two lands. So it sounds nice. We don't have an Anthem quite yet, but going Knight into Hallow Blade's good, and then we have our removal and Giant Killer. You generally don't want to see more than four lands. So hopefully we don't flood out here. Um, the downside to this versus like a Boros list is we don't have Scalds. So if they want to trade the use here, I'm fine. So hands obviously not shaping out great, having drawn another snow plains here. So opponents on Gruel. We have Eddie. So this kind of telegraphs that they have Bone Crusher Giant. Oh, they just go Shield Breaker, draw themselves a card. We stop drawing lands deck. I think we still need to try to be aggressive here. We're not going to win a long game versus like a henge deck. That's incredibly aggressive, but we'll take it. I feel like that's your best card in this. Like throw away your shield breaker. So we'll drop faceless haven next turn. Ideally, they just go like, oh, they go war here. So 
So they can attack in I'm still going to attack, I think. Well, generally you're not going to want to see that many lines. I can assure you of that. See if they want to block here. We're going to have to attack anyways. So I can use this faceless to block something. There's two creatures in the yard, so we need to be mindful of the scavenging use. Okay. So I can't block there. It's hitting me for a lot. I think we just take them off this, delete the two here, then I can giant killer the use. Because I will get back my hollow blade. We're at six. So unfortunately, we do need to attack here. So I have to play this out as a creature because I do need a block. Otherwise, we're dead. So for a deck that's got a lot of one drops, we're seeing the opposite end of things here. I get my Hallow Blade back, which is nice. This can block the brush fire if needed. And then with Giant Killer, I can tap down their big things. Also have another Giant Killer in hand. Sorry, give me a sec. There was a spider crawling on my window. Well, the spider disappeared, so that's fun. Well, if this is Ember Cleave, we're dead. Show me Cleave. So they had to cleave like you're not gonna at that point in the game couldn't do much um so in this matchup we want glass okay apparently they didn't want to play against white guess we take those one of the unfortunate things about the play queue i just like i said we're a couple wins from mythic I've been ranking up with auras and historic, so I just want to get to that threshold. I don't want to potentially drop a bit due to some variants. I think we try this. Because we had the stone coil, I was okay with having the four lions. Depending what we see out of the opponent, if it's like, okay, so island. So I'm gonna want to get this out of uh, stomp range. Hmm. I think we still do this. 
actually. I think we do this. If they stomp it, we can protect. We put Maul on. If they Frostbite, we can protect it. This looks like, um, is it Tempo? fine now we just kind of curve out we make this four mana if they attack in that's fine if they brazen borrower this it's not the end of the world we just get it back and it's larger they can attack him for four, I hit them for four. We started the attacks earlier. Okay, so that could be a counter spell. Could be a behold the multiverse. Glorious Anthem. So this will draw out a counter, potentially. So I'm going to do this to fizzle the Bone Crusher. This point, do I want a second one? It doesn't allow me. So I can make this one. It comes in as two. It just dies to everything. So probably not. If we hit another land, I could just start making two twos every turn. Usher's nice here. Why won't it let me boast? Oh, I had to be on the field. My intent was, I thought boast was as long as it attacked I didn't know that seems wrong still I attacked so I met the criteria okay so they can hit me for eight here So I'm doing this, put the counter on this, so then I can block a dragon. If they have Brazen Borrower, can they just Shark for one? Shark doesn't do too much here because it was still a multi-turn clock wouldn't mind a land okay um so in this matchup we do want the redeems um i think we want selfless so I'm going to drop the Clarions because they're going to bring in Storm's Wrath, so I'm not as inclined to have like sweepers of that extent. Flying isn't as relevant. I'd rather have Basriket. This gets hit by Storm's Wrath. A lot of their stuff's instant speed, so we can do that. Hushbringer doesn't really do much outside of giving us a big lifelinker. 
They have Bone Crusher, which again isn't great. Our remove we have the giant killers for their stuff, so maybe just a hushbringer, just something to give life link. Or no, you know what? I'd rather just maul probably. Trim on a venerable actually no we'll keep the venerable knight we'll go down one glorious anthem they're gonna have the counters so not crazy about committing too much to the board in one shot the one drops at least go wide to some extent but still in this matchup you're not going to want some play crush the week as well so this is actually a pretty good hand Because it lets us go Usher, Usher, and I think we're going to play this out as the Artifact side. So they can kill my Usher here. want to keep this for like a dragon or something so like it's always kind of an iffy thing here because like you could play retain out but it just slows them down a turn it doesn't do huge amounts so there was consideration of playing this out first but then they just kill it anyways so it doesn't do huge things um, so we've already seen a Scorching Dragon Fire and a thing out of them. I think we just go this. It's more mana efficient. Let's see if they have another removal spell. They did have to shock this in, meaning that they could be low on lands. So we can see dragon here out of them so I do want to hold this up actually they can't dragon this is gonna tax them so go brazen here should have gone this because now this is likely a counter spell So if this is counter, they counter here. They brought in negate. That's a strange one. Hopefully that's not a counter. So that's behold the multiverse. So I want this root because this blocks better and it holds the dragon back. This gives them more mana. If I draw land then I could redain and giant killer and we probably just do this out as a um, Distraction. Ah, that one hurts. The borrower there is rough just from a tempo play because we have to invest five mana. Still going to do it. They have another borrower, I can't do much. Going giant killer here doesn't accomplish a whole lot because we still can't deal with both of them. 
They could still have another bar R. We've seen two so far. Okay, that bodes well. So if ever a source targets us. I think we're going this side. It also slows down the damage they can deal. I'm really surprised they kept negates in against a weenie deck. So I'm going to do this on upkeep. So if they do have a spell, they have to tap their mana, but we're going to restrict them on the card draw for the turn. They have it all, don't they? So this is one of the negatives of the deck. If you do go long game, you're going to get ground out by your opponents. We didn't really, well, we had a decent draw, just double borrower and the removal. So they have like stomp here. They're just going face. I think I like targeting Stone Coil here because it gets this off the battlefield. Because now I can just keep making blockers. Like they can put me to one, they need another burn spell. Five, eight, I think we play out the line tier because if I can make faceless, so one, two, three, four. So I need nine mana. Oh, they just got the shark. They freaking drew everything. Um, okay, so they did bring in the gates. So I think we're just going to go low to the ground here. These redains are tricky. We'll take out the Banishing Light. Let's just try to aggro them out. Like, I don't want to give them tokens. And our hand, like, Generally speaking, if you're bringing in negates against a deck that's got so many creatures, you're usually punished. But how our draws came up, you weren't really able to pull it out that way. So play first. Um... I think we keep this. Really unfortunate we didn't draw one drop or have a one drop that we could play out on curve. So I'm going to lead on the Hallow Blade here. If they had the mana, I don't think I mind trying to deal with that then. Okay. That's a good one. It 
So outside of Brazen Borrower, they don't have a clean answer for the Hallow Blade. Going double Clarion Spirit's also an option. So I want to just get this out of sh a stomp range. That's fine. Again, going playing the savior out doesn't accomplish anything there. So I can go Clarion Spirit here, number two, that does play us into Storm's Wrath, where this lets me protect two things from a Storm's Wrath. Okay, they behold. Double tops, not the uh, the nicest of things to see. So here I still have six power. I have them on a two turn clock. Um, so my conundrum here, I can make this a four, four. We get hit by a second one. If they go gold span dragon on defense, I also don't get anything here. I could just play it out, but then we get hit by removal. I can make this like three, this, this, then we get that. Yeah, I think we, no, because if they have stomp, this just hits this. Okay, I think we're passing the turn. They have too many cards in hand, because then they just stomp on this. So they need something here. If it's just activate faceless, then we're in a good spot. It's looking like they're trying to activate faceless to get a block in. So I can kill it to deny them, but I don't think that accomplishes a lot. Just play out two creatures here. Like this is really their only clean answer. If they want to stomp this, that's fine. If it plays out Giant Killer, then I can kill it, or their thing. Okay. So we're going to do this pre-combat, so I know if I have an out here. So they could have priority from that. No, they see it coming. So 
I'm going to protect here because I want to keep this in hand, but I also want to take them off this Bone Crusher Giant. Just enough of tempo here. Have to do that. So they have another removal spell then. That's freaking ridiculous. Six lands and then nothing else. All right, we're dead here. A little bit of an iffy hand. We weren't pro as proactive as I wanted. They did have Storm's Wrath, so we were playing into it, but Timely Brazen Borrower. Can't do much in those instances. Fire up one more. So with like a Scald's version, you do get some added advantage of the card draw, but that's likely going to get countered anyways. Because hand's aggressive. We're probably playing against rogues. Giant Killer can potentially have some targets. Show me Thought Thief. So one thing here, so I will trade with them here if they attack. That's pretty easy. So this plays Heartless Act better. And I don't care if this gets drowned in the locked. This also blocks Thoring, Soaring Thought Thief better. And now that it's resolved, they have less removal. So I can block here. I can use the Aspirin to put a third counter on this. They have the Thirst. Not getting the lineup of spells we want. they counter this I'm just gonna go to sideboard we don't have the tools main board if they've interacted with our initial rush must be nice to have it all so in this matchup here the Hushbringers are actually pretty good so it's kind of at odds cuz the sky clays are good but they turn off your ability to use um hushbringer so we lose the mill but i think we want apparition instead um giant killer is pretty bad here probably just take out basri cat since we're going up a little higher in curve basri doesn't do too much in this matchup basri's more for like the yorian piles So this land, hand's a little land heavy, but we have both castle and usher, which allows us to pump mana. We also have a glass casket for exactly like turn one crab. Now I can go serpent for three here. I think we attack first if they go Thought Thief. Because then next turn I can go Anthem and Savior. This can't get drowned in the locked because it's pro. It's fine. I think we do this first. They don't have enough to drown. They'd have to go Thieves Guild into Drown in the Lock. 
I say that as they draw exactly Thieves Guild into Drown in the Lock, probably. I th think we hold off a turn. I want to use this Usher to at least pump. Not a bad sequence of exact two cards. In your top 10 cards, you have four lions, two thieves, crab, and a drown. We are kind of flooding out at this point. They go soaring here. So I can boast here or just use this. I think I want to keep the stone coil alive more than anything. Just be more mana efficient. A 1-1 one, one now is not going to do too much. All the answers. Show me into the story. So not the spot we want to be in. Us flooding out, them having their answers. So I'm doing this because if they try to kill it, I can sack to protect it a turn. So it's just Luris to hand. Okay, Faceless isn't bad. Faceless gives me something that can attack in, put some pressure. They may be flooding as well. Wouldn't mind Skyclave Apparition here. They have Thought Thief. I don't want to attack in with this. now they just get back their crab or one of their thieves guilds they can actually get both thieves one this turn one next turn or during each of your turns now we're in a pretty bad spot Play out what we have, but they can just mill us. So the thing is, even just going defensive here is not great. We needed Skyclave like that turn. We still have our Skyclaves in there. And it's unlikely they don't have another counter. Show me what you got. That's alarming. That's most likely counter spells, oh, especially now with Thinta's the story. We did just draw another line. Next time, I'm just going to concede. Jeez. Can't beat that. 
at this point it's two. We deal with the Luris, but we're not going to be able to amass enough. They have too many cards in hand. So it's one of the downsides. You can go really aggressive, but if the meta is going to shift to a lot of cheap interaction, it limits what you can do here. What you want to do is really prey upon the decks that aren't going to be able to interact. If Rogues remains popular, it's going to be difficult for the deck to deal with as well. Although you can go kind of wide, they are able to put 1-3 blockers in the way and Crab does Stonewall a bit. Um, as well as with the Is It deck, we saw you can win the games, uh, but it really depends on how your creatures line up with theirs. So I'm pretty much going to wrap it up. Appreciate everyone stopping by. As always, you can catch my content on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, thanks for the support, and if you can, like, comment, and subscribe.